I came across something yesterday I found quite interesting. It was relating to John McAvey, the guy that wrote the virus killing software. Um, he lost everything in Belize. He was accused of murdering somebody. But when I was listening to this radio show, I had alarm bells going off the whole show because the guy seems completely ignorant. Um, but I had the same with another expat that was in Belize um, that wrote a book about life there. And I just want to give you a couple of things. The first thing is, John McAvey spent half a million dollars on a house in a country he didn't know, didn't understand the people, etc. And just was very ignorant of the risks he was putting himself under. Philippines, you do not spend half a million pounds on a house unless you have a lot of influence and connections or tied with these people that can actually look after you. It's just not worth the headaches. I know people that aren't even that wealthy that will get threatened with kidnappings and stuff. So he was very ignorant, but he won't admit that he was ignorant. It's all more to do with him talking about the fact that the way he was treated. This was not how I expected to be treated. Um, the US is very different. The US. You're not in the US. Um, I had this discussion with somebody else a few years back where a guy had threatened to kill him in front of a judge and he was still going well you know in the US with it you're not in the US a guy that will stand in front of a judge and tell you he will kill you is not a guy that really cares what the law says he's obviously got more influence and power than the judge stood in front of you now the reason I want to talk about this is responsibility and the same went with this um, this woman. She's wrote a book about it, and I was just uh, she was reading extracts. And I'm just thinking this is just oh, it's a nonsense. She was going, oh, I can't feed the kids because I can't get this. Blah, blah. I'm like, what? She was expecting to go shopping every day, and I, I I just couldn't understand what she was doing. She'd gone to some remote island, um, and was basically relying on a pump boat to go and get food and stuff but she hadn't even bothered to think about how she was going to do it and I just find these, these people just seem so insular I know in the the UK or in the US you just go down the supermarket and stuff but when you're in these countries food isn't always available not what you want and I mean one of the things she was on about is she couldn't get some of the snacks that her kids wanted and stuff what are you talking about? You're in another country. You're supposed to adapt to it, not assume that you're going to get your steak and pie or whatever every day. If they don't serve it, you know, these are. this is why people come unstuck. What you need to do is research, understand, learn the culture and stuff. Um, because if you don't, this is where things go wrong. But don't turn around and say the country's wrong. It's you that is wrong because you have not adapted to that culture. The U.S. is not better than these countries. It's just that you're sitting in a different social class. So what happens is you become very ignorant. You assume somebody's going to do this, the police are going to do that. Forget all that. Don't assume nothing. Because the fact is you're in another country. Don't be so ignorant. Spend a bit of time researching and understand what goes on. It's like people go, well, is there earthquakes and stuff? All the newspapers are online. Research them. Just go into one of them and just go, earthquake, quick search, tornadoes, hurricanes, whatever you want, whatever country it is. And they'll have the news articles when they last had one, if they had one. That is getting yourself informed. What I would do is sit there with something like this and just write down what you think is important, what you need to th think about. Is, should I put a half million pound house in a country I do not know or understand? What risk is that? Can I afford to lose it if the government changed? If like the government was overthrown and it suddenly become a country under martial law, for example, and decided that all its party members take all the big houses, can you afford to take the loss? Those are the things that go through my mind. Everything I have in the Philippines, I write off. You know, people value stuff, um, material stuff is something of importance. My personal view is it's just material items. What matters to me is family, what matters to me is the people around me. The rest of it I can rebuild over and over again if I have to. 
I don't sit there and over invest in something this is why I'm very funny about mortgages and debt because I don't like any debt whatsoever uh, that's why I, I'm in, actually in front I am <clears throat> financially I've got money in the bank etc I have no debt I have no credit cards etc but I, it took a while to get to that situation but playing it forward is not easy but it's all about understanding that things are not the way you're used to and I get a bit frustrated with these people because they annoy me um, because they blame the country for not being like the US they blame the country that oh I've been ripped off because I've built this big house while everybody around me is really poor and I can't understand why that that would be a problem it's because you're living in a third world country rich people in these countries are often criminals they're criminals either from political corruption gangland whatever it is they control it because it's a third world country don't expect things to be the way you're used to don't assume that everything's going to go your way assume that you know nothing and start from there that's how I do it, you know, when I sit there and I just sit and I go, okay, what's my questions, what, what don't I know, what should I, what, if I'm coming to a new country, doesn't matter what country this is, by the way, if I'm coming to a new country, what do I need to know, and then you sit there and you research it all, don't make any assumptions, it, it's just the easiest way of doing it, it's just blank your memory, don't assume nothing, start from scratch, just go there with no information whatsoever do your research use the news but like I said newspapers good for the weather stuff the earthquakes the typhoons the hurricanes the uh, overthrowing of a government check all the stability things first and then work your way back into the smaller stuff things like transportation food how far is it from the main airport how good is the hospitals because this woman was on about a some needed braces and how much this was a big event and oh we'd have to go back they recommend I go back to America I don't know what you're doing woman you're in the wrong place um, but the whole point here is do a bit of research and like I said get yourself a little book go and buy a book they're not expensive I'll actually put a link in Amazon down here so you'll actually go and buy a book <laughs> um, but sit and write this information down and work your way through it go right I'm here now I've arrived at the airport where do I go sit and write down is there taxis is there a minibus system is there a rail you know I can't make any more simple it but I just got frustrated with this bloody John McAvey because he was in, in, insulting the country um, but when I listen to it, okay, they got corruption and that, but the corruption's there anyway. I expect corruption in the Philippines. Why can't he expect it to be in Belize? It's his ignorance. Um, yeah, corruption's a bad thing, but at the same time, his mistakes have been his mistakes um, because he set set the presidents by building a huge house, which obviously. Um, rock the boat a bit because they then seen he had lots of money as such give us money because I'm wanting to win a, the next election I will offer you in return some XYZ which obviously will probably pay that back if he had paid it um, but at the same time you have to be aware this is third world politics it's nothing like the West even in places that are it, Jamaica and places like that they have compounds they have huge subdivisions with armed guards and stuff India has this place that I was interested in myself a few years back it's got a it's out of Mumbai it's in its own like huge huge area armed guards electric fences all singing or dancing subdivision but it's not like a normal subdivision it's got its own mountains and all sorts huge thing but it's limited to only business people um, well wealthy people which it, you wouldn't have to leave there let's put it that way because it's got everything on site 
but these places exist because of the risks to people's lives because of criminal gangs politicians etc etc don't make assumptions please <laughs>